Hello and welcome back to the Conversation Is podcast. I'm Charlie Pitson and with me is Josh. How are we doing? How's it going? I'm good, man. I'm good. Josh, I'm... by the way, is a kind of unofficial co-host at this point. I mean, yeah, pretty much. I mean, we've had this indefinitely. Already, yeah. yeah, I'm the co-host indefinitely. Yeah, so until a bit of a replacement is found, which will probably be. Never. So no more, <laughs> no, no, no more again jokes. So just so you know that this is the score. This is this is the last time we're making this uh, this joke. <laughs> anyway, so this week we are talking about Parasite. 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 What a film! Academy Award winning Parasite. Academy Best Award. Best Picture winning yeah. Parasite. Bong Joon Ho. What, what oh. else can you say? He's a he's a legend. Yeah, he's a legend, he's a man. Guy. Yeah, yeah. What an absolute guy. Right, let's get into it then. Right, Parasite. So we just watched this. We had to go see it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, what do you think? I think it deserved Best Picture, really. I mean, I still, just because of who I am, liked Ford vs. Ferrari more. Yeah. But at the same time, I, like, I can appreciate how good this is, like this film. Yeah, it's. I mean, you were quite excited when it won as well. Yeah, like, I, I was really excited. I was more excited just because it was like the hype train kept building. Yeah, yeah. After Cause, winning cause the he... best international film, and no, it was first. He first they won best original screenplay, original screenplay, then international yeah. film, then director, which is the one that everyone was like, he did nah, win, nah, he did win best director. He won, he? won best director. So yeah, when yeah. you see when he won best director, that's when the hype was like at its most. I was like, I swear to God, if Parasite wins now, it's gonna be crazy. And then it was just, on the roll at that point. It, yeah, you know it was formidable. It was on a it? roll. Yeah, it was going. It was going at a good, good pace. It was. He was loving life. In fact, no, I don't think he was. I think all he all he wanted he wanted to do, was cocktails. All he wanted yeah. to do was go I get his cocktails. Drink. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. just kept putting Oscars in his hands. Like, <laughs> he, how many did he win? Four? Four? four, four in the end. Yeah, four. yeah. He won four, four Oscars. Oscars. I think. Uh, yeah, it actually says right here he tied the record for the most wins in a single ceremony with Walt Disney. And is the only person to win four awards for one film. This this guy, right, never been nominated for an Academy Award. Masterpiece. Gets nominated like you know for you know for one ceremony, he ends up winning four of the the biggest awards you can get. Yeah, literally. and uh, Parasite is the first non English speaking film to win Best Picture the entirety of the ninety two you know years Indeed. of the Academy Awards, which is incredible. Like the, the guy broke so many records in one night. It's incredible, and it, it's well deserved because this film is outrageous yeah because we only went to go see it after the academy wars didn't we yeah yeah. because it was kind of we were just like we were meaning we kept meaning to see it and then it won and we were like right okay. well it was after watching okja that was kind of, that kind of me yeah watch actually it, yeah you know? okja as well which was and then film. finding out that he directed the host like a, the you host, know the giant tadpole a, a, film. yeah the, <laughs> <laughs> the giant yeah yeah the giant tadpole i mean film. this is what it is isn't it which is it funny because we've both seen it we just don't remember I, re- I, re- I don't remember, remember being like a kid. I don't remember it. any of it. The only thing I remember from it was the giant tadpole coming out of the water and like yeah, just yeah. running around, just fucking and just like running people. along the, the houses and stuff. And yeah, we need to watch that uh, very soon because I mean I feel like we're, we're in a we're in the mood. We're, we're in the mood for a yeah. We're in the bong, bong hive ju- now. We're in the bong. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag bong hive. Hashtag bong hive. Yeah, we, we're in the bong hive. So we're gonna try and get some of his films and just get cracking on with them because you know. The song was great. Sick, and, yeah. yeah, it's gonna be good. But uh, by the way, this oh, will be spo- like, so. a kind of spoiler-filled episode. If you know, yeah, like most definitely spoilers. Are. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was an absolute slaw at the end. Of the it was not it, it was like a once upon a time in the ho- in Hollywood kind of literally. But like, I, exactly I, what I, I did not like. see that's that. Exactly how I mean, like, like, I, it it kind of like shapes up to to kind of get to that point of the story. But I wasn't expecting it in the way that I kind of expected. Once upon a time in Hollywood, yeah. to go in the direction it did, because you know, within Auckland, they weren't going to do the actual Sharon Tate and get murdered, because you know that just wouldn't be. Yeah, it just it wouldn't. It would very happen. nice. Yeah, in, <laughs> in the film, it would be a bit. Yeah, <laughs> and also Tarantino, you know, loves him some some. He does the same. He does the same with Inglorious Bastards and Django. It's all kind of his own Django his especially. own world of stuff. But Bong Joon Ho is kind of like he's kind of got this um, unofficial universe. None of this films take place. According to him, I think he said uh, during the Grammy Awards that his films don't really necessarily take place on our Earth. Yeah. I mean, you know, Ock just got that weird, you know, was it the Super Pig? Super Pig, The yeah. host. Which I still don't... I haven't seen the rest of his films, so I don't really know, but this yeah. this also feels like it's kind of like living in like a non-Earth 
kind of. Yeah. It's the closest, like, obviously, out of the three films that I've seen. Um, yeah, because Ultra, realism, was, but... Ultra was weird. Ultra was really weird because I could, when, I, when we watched it, like, I remember sitting there going, how how is this super big that significant? Like, in terms of, like, you know, environmental, you know, like... Why, yeah, why were people so hyped about it? It was just a big pig. No, because they because it, it was like the perfect pig, and it was great for you know they were breeding them, and then they were turning into meat. Do you, you know the entire third act? Yeah, oh yeah, they, yeah, they go yeah, to the slaughterhouse and save Okja and you know. Oh yeah, I know, the, but the like, rest of the super but like, thing. surely it doesn't it doesn't reproduce that much quicker. I don't know because it would have to reproduce like plants for it to even be like you know sustainable. So like. It just didn't make any sense to me. I was, I mean, I went with it because it was a really good film, but like, it yeah. just didn't make much sense to me. Also, every single nomination, that anything, anything you got nominated, you want every nomination. What a, guy. what a guy! I love it. I love it. But yeah, seeing as we just get, it's just, just, it's just getting into the Oscars real quick while we. Yeah, while we're there. While, while we're there. Well, I mean, what a show! Like, I had a good time. It was I a really good time. Enjoyed wasn't it, it, yeah. yeah. I thought I was staying up until like four o'clock in the morning for absolutely nothing. I thought it was going to be like yeah, I mean, just we like missed, every we other missed, Oscars. Like the start, maybe the open, oh, yeah. the open mono, um Yeah, I think I think it works better without a host. Um, I think it's it's cooler with the, without a host, definitely, because it allows you to see loads of different yeah. actors get on stage and present shit. So it's like in that kind of regard, yeah, I think it's great. It's just the like actors, directors presenting someone about to present yeah. an award it is weird, but it works. But it was good to see a load of actors. We didn't stage. we didn't end up doing uh predictions in the end because we mm. didn't watch all the films. It wouldn't it, it wouldn't, wouldn't feel yeah, like it, yeah, it wouldn't feel it like wouldn't a fair have felt kind of, justified doing it. But there was a few that we we did kind of well, we we kinda of blind voted in a way. And uh, you know, the obvious ones were Joaquin Phoenix winning best yeah. actor and I mean he had to, didn't he? Really. Brad Pitt, Laura Dern winning Best supporting actor and best supporting actress. Mm. Oh, and and Renee Zellweger winning best actress and Ford v Ferrari winning something. <laughs> <laughs> Ford v Ferrari winning some sort of technical, winning yeah. like at least a majority of the technical awards. Which it won. I think um, it, did. it won a lot of sound stuff, didn't it? It did run along. I think it was editing as well, I believe. Which I'm alright with. I'm okay with it not winning best picture because this definitely deserved it. As long yeah, as it I mean, won, after seeing this now, something. after seeing this now, compared to all the other ones we've seen, it is by far. The most deserved. It's not my favorite one. Oh, it's definitely not it's my, not my favorite, favorite. It's one. the most deserved, definitely. It's just I just like cars. <laughs> 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 this is essentially what it is. I'm just a you boy. are such a man. I'm such a man. You're yeah, I like man. I like cars. I love cars so. So much. And I know that's mm. where a lot of the criticisms came from. You and cars, B man. <laughs> I lo- that's I know that's where most of the criticisms came for um for B Ferrari and people were like, oh, you know, it was just it was a man's film and you know this this that and I was just like. I mean, I kind of, I kind of don't agree, but I also do agree <laughs> because I really enjoyed it. Just because I like cars. <laughs> Tycho yeah, it won. It won. Be- yeah, for sure, Ferrari won by Simon, e- um, by Simon Edison. Didn't win that many. Oh, best film editing. Best film editing. That was yeah, the other one, yeah, which yeah. is quite good. I like that. I I would have loved to have seen uh, Parasite win best editing. Yeah. Just because of that final act, you know, kind of. Uh, the, that last, that last, not, that in, last in, lingering you're shot never where sure. he, um, oh, the, oh. where he like he runs out to go and uh, oh you know he walks out to go and yeah. see them in the um, in the back garden. Oh, it really bugs me that like um, he hugs his son, but then he he doesn't make it. Yeah, the, he doesn't the, wife, make, the wife's yeah. come in and then it just kind of it fades, fades out black before she, hu- she hugs before him. Before she yeah. hugs him, and it, 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 it drives me nuts. Just like the one of the most annoying things I've noticed. It just like oh, you could have just let you could have she could have just hurried up, man. Yeah, uh, it just felt weird. Not a big deal though. This film reminds me of something that I've seen before. You know, a bit like Panic Room, but like a reversal of Panic Room. You know, the Jodie Foster yeah. film. Yeah, yeah, I get you. That also reminds me of um, oh, Pain and Gain, Pain and Gain, and this is gonna be a weird comparison. Have you seen that film, Pain and Gain, Pain the and Gain. um Michael Bay film? Oh no, I haven't. No, The Rock, Anthony Mackie, and Mark Wahlberg. Mm. Uh, they're all like you know, right heads essentially, oh, and God. they don't. It's set in the East. True story. True story. Uh, the guys in the end, I think they got um, sentenced to death. Mm. 
because they murdered a bunch of people and like you know stole a lot of money just a lot of legal shit i mean um but it's basically the just the story is that they try to kidnap this rich guy yeah and like steal all his money and i feel like this is kind of what they're trying to do with the house Mm. I mean, in a similar, it's the closest thing it's probably the worst example but I, I couldn't think of anything at the top of my head other than pain and gain as the see, closest what, see, the, the thing that I like about this film though is that it's very like <laughs> once you've watched it you realise how on the nose the title is <laughs> oh yeah like, yeah because like, there's so many different like themes in this film of like you know parasites leeching off of other other people or other things and yeah. you know stuff like that and it's it's just throughout the entire film, just loads and loads of It's not of what you expect, examples. though, is it? Because um, when I first did the title, I thought, okay, you can, he's going to do a horror film. Mm. All right. Yeah, because you think Parasite, you just think horror film, right? I was yeah. thinking he was going to do some sort of, like, us, like I the mean, Jordan Peele film, Us, like something along the lines of that, where people, maybe, like, they clone people or something like that, and it's like, or maybe, like, a Stepford Wives kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Where, like, the, they're taking over their bodies or... Um, yeah. Yeah, just just small, just taking over like aliens, taking over people's bodies or something like that, or like a parasite, you know. Mm, oh yeah, I get you. Um, I get you. I get you. That's the close. That's what I thought it was me about, but it, it completely threw me off. And we didn't really go into it knowing what the film was about. We just mm. kind of. Oh, I had no idea. We what kind of, it was we kind about of until I watched it. Well, I, but I still think I still think there are some like horror aspects of this film that are just like that were terrifying. There was the um the whole part where there was some sound sound cues that Yeah, like, that, but there was stuff know. like when he was um which when, when the mother um the the rich mother was um talking to I think it was the the poor mother when she was acting as the maid, she was talking to her about the at uh, the time that he saw a ghost in the oh, house. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was like the the um the shot that it, they had. Oh of the, yeah, um, the, the shot. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It was, and it was nightmarish. Just, just, it was just the eyes. Yeah, yeah his eyes were like really. It wasn't blue quite a jump scare. Really, though, was really, it? Oh no, it wasn't a jump scare. Like it kind of just appeared from, and it reminded me of it ri- reminded me of um, the grudge. Oh the, no, the, <laughs> the grudge. Yeah, that as well. But, I just um, remind. No, is it the grudge? The one with the little the boy. One, yeah, the little, little boy and the little girl. Both of them. Wait, the grudge. Yeah, the grudge. Yeah. Yeah, the little boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was thinking. It's a little, I, little boy and little girl. I haven't seen the oh, no, it's not a little girl. No, it's a woman. But um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm so regardless. used to the scary movie films. Parry, um, you know. Oh, the parodies. Yeah, the parodies. <laughs> like, so I always get confused which one's the grudge and which yeah. one's the ring. But the ring's the girl in it. Yeah. But um, I was gonna say it was more like um, the most recent Evil Dead film. Oh yeah. The, there was uh, one. There was one particular shot of the um, of one of the. Um, I can't remember. I'll think of it later. Um, I don't know. I'm, but where I'm, it's like it's like like pushing its head out through like um um like a trap door. Oh, and it's like its eyes are like really like fucked. Like and that's what on. and that's what it reminded me of because it was it was that like scary. It was that scary. But it was just like a yeah. That's that's what I mean by like it was just there were some really terrifying shots and the guy going out into the back garden as well. And just oh yeah, yeah. His, you know down. his face is absolutely ruined yeah. from when he. Was and like you know, he he absolutely like <laughs> he drops a rock on the um, on the kid's face twice in like two seconds. Somehow doesn't kill him. It somehow doesn't. We, were, yeah, we thought he died, and he seemed completely fine afterwards as well. Yeah, he just, yeah no that, scars or anything. What he, like. he turned to the Joker, then he couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, he couldn't stop laughing. It's very much <laughs> what it was. If you didn't know, it, all the Oscar nominees are all linked in some sort yeah. of way. They were all um, for uh, <laughs> versions of Christian, the Joker. Christian Christian Bale was in Batman. He fought the Joker. No, Link really. number one, Parasite, he becomes a Joker. <laughs> you know, Parasite different. is the best non-Joker Joker film of all time. <laughs> no. Joker origin film. Joker, oh my God. There's some really good um, like humorous moments in this film as well, actually. No, yeah, like, what is it? It's a black comedy, really, isn't it? Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff <laughs> in it. There's like, there's just like, really subtle jokes. Or it's the a small talk. The small it's talk a thriller is disguised so as a black comedy. Like, yeah, it, it's... A lot of the small talk, like you, I remember you mentioning it early and early on in the film when we was, when we watched it. Yeah, and it was like it. I remember you saying straight away the small talk in this is just really good. Like, you, yeah. it's very difficult to get small talk right in a film because pe- most people just don't can, care; they just want the, the story to go forward. But speaking like, of that, though, you can definitely like see the influences from Scorsese in his work. Oh yeah, definitely, and Tarantino. Mm. I know he's, he said that uh, Scorsese is the reason he get he got into filmmaking in the first place, and it's just I th- I think it's just this kind of like they, it does have these like really long dialogue 
seems not so much like you know kind of like a walk and chat thing that like yeah. you know Tarantino does kind of like do not as, not as much as Sorkin yeah, yeah but no it's really good it's great dialogue as well yeah the end mm. of the films the end of this film is really really brutal but I like the way it's it's just all about concepts isn't it really this film yeah because there's once the parasite latches on so the first you know the the first guy gets um gets infiltrates the family yeah the rest of them do it in very quick succession so the parasite just grows stronger and then you find out later that there was another parasite an older parasite there that had been there the whole time it's, it's like, like it's like a metaphor yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's what i mean it's a very conceptual film and i love it so apparently there's a spin-off t- television series is this the the netflix one we were talking I, about HBO. I thought it was on Netflix. HBO, no, HBO limited series based on the film with Bong and Adam McKay, adapting and executively producing. Is an early, that de- an early development? It'll also be titled Parasite, and it explores stories that happen between the sequences in the film. It's a bit strange. And apparently, Mark Ruffalo was being eyed to star. What do you think of that? I want to say it's unnecessary. At the, at I want to say no because it's it just seems like that's a bit of a an awkward an awkward way to structure it. It seems like you know you're setting well, the, yourself the, up as as they that. were saying though a lot of people were saying on Twitter you know they can't wait for the American remake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! As soon as as soon as Keanu Reeves would be the dad definitely. As soon as Americans uh, find a new fresh original idea that they know does well. They'll use that. They'll latch onto mm-hmm. that like a parasite. Like a parasite, and they'll exactly. they'll do sequels, reboots, remakes, whatever they can. They'll milk it out of a franchise. Oh yeah. They'll they'll try and get them to do a sequel. You know, a new family steps in and just constantly new families. Some some bullshit like that. You know, it's like it's like it's yeah. You know? <laughs> so a reoccurring segment on the podcast, rotten reviews. We have five, and that's it. That's not too bad. So we're going to read out all of them because <laughs> we're going to read, yeah, well read all of them. And away we go. The parasites have parasites. Uh, uh, Do that's, they? Uh, that's it. Do they? Yeah, because you just said it. I mean, but they're both just leeching off the same thing, aren't they? They're not leeching off, you know, one off of the other off the other. They're, still, it's just still, two yeah, on the same still, one. Yeah, true. But that's like the best review out of Parasites are Parasites. Original score, two out of five. Okay. You know what I mean? There's nothing I'm to assuming, say to that, I'm, assu- I'm assuming this guy is... I'm assuming it's a guy. It's definitely a guy. It is a guy. He is a guy. I'm, and I'm assuming he's white. He is. Okay. <laughs> and that's the end of that. <laughs> that's uh, moving on. That. <laughs> uh, uh, so we have one here. No doubt Asian capitalist interests are well served in the end. There won't be rioting in the streets on the back of this one. A film is hardly effective satire if it doesn't point up to a route to radical change. I mean, you can still have a commentary on something. You know? It's yeah. definitely it's, There's definitely, like, themes of, like, capitalism in this film. That's what... Well, that, isn't that kind of the... the that's kind the of, point. That's, the, that's one it? of yeah. the main themes, That's one of the main themes. But it's like... It's like a class war... Yeah, but you shouldn't have to, like, you know, do a Joker and have people rioting in the streets and setting shit on fire. I don't going, think... We, we, I don't I don't, think... I'm not understood by the government. Like, you know, we don't need that. You can be a commentary of something without ramping up to something and, you know... I don't think it's trying too hard to be on that theme. I think it kind of displays... It lends itself to that yeah, theme it lends just through that the plot. Theme, just yeah. through the plot. You know... You sneak it in there, you know, as kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is important. You know, this is kind of something that, you know, if you can see this, then you can see it in real life. You know, mm. if you miss it. It's a film that not transcends it. its theme, really, because yeah. it is the theme of capitalism. But it's done in such a, a great way that it, you don't even really think about it in like that. So, well, you know, backing up that before we move into the next one. The main themes of Parasite are actually class conflict and social inequality, and mm-hmm. film critics and Bong Joon-ho himself have considered the film as a reflection of modern capitalism. There you go. So, yeah. Shut you oh, down, fool. <laughs> yeah. Fool. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. That's not savage commentary. That's condescension. This is by far the filmmaker's most commercially successful work to date. Jealous. <laughs> Jealous? Much you don't have four Academy Awards? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... 
Yeah, it's a... Of course it's commercially successful. Of course it's commercially successful. It's his best film. I mean, bearing in mind that this was this was from November 6th, 2019, so this is before the Oscar uh, Academy Awards. Yeah, but it, the reason it's it was so successful in the end is because it was a good film. Exactly. So And he's a great director. Yeah. And he's, he's obviously, getting, he's you know, finally he's, getting he's his got, credit he's got, he he's, get, he's getting recognition in, you know, in the in the US, you know, since probably the host, maybe yeah. even before that. You he's know. just he's getting the recognition he deserves now, which is what is the, that's the whole point. Yeah. You can't expect And uh, he's probably going to make some even weirder stuff now that he's he's going to be getting, you know, yeah. All the money like, to not, make like, his films. Every director has directed a few unknown films before they, you know, before they had a blow oh, up. Yeah. Like, you know. I mean, the Ruto brothers did You, Me, and Dupree. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that's why we got like 6% on tomorrow. It's a crap <laughs> film. <laughs> Go on to the fourth one. Go on to the fourth one. A condescending, pessimistic portrayal of human nature, bereft of class consciousness or ideology. I mean, it's it's wrong, though. Really? This, the, the word con- condescending keeps popping up. In the, in, in, in yeah, the... why is it condescending? I don't know. I can't... I, can't... I don't... I, sometimes people's idiocy... I, I understand so the pessimistic much. betrayal of human nature. Of course I guess it's that. pessimistic, but that's the point. I mean, yeah, because they're poor. That's the point. They're poor. They're not going to have an optimistic view do of you life. Not like, do you not have like you seen people they showing live? They live in a semi... A semi basement is what yeah, they call, it's a semi they call it. Isn't I think it? It's called a semi basement. Semi basement yeah. is where it's half in and half out of the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, like kind of like one of those really awful like hot tubs. <laughs> you know, it's like above ground hot tub. It's still yeah. a hot tub, <laughs> but it's not like <laughs> built into its surroundings. But it's tub. not a hot tub. It's not a hot. It's tub. It's a kind of lukewarm tub. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I I I I get the, the pessimism tub. in it. Yeah, I, I you know. Yeah, but that sh- that shouldn't be a, a a reason to discredit it because that's the point. Well, you know, well, if any of them have like made you feel a bit indifferent, right? Listen to the last one. Bong is an unfunny extremist. In Parasite, he annihilates the concept of nuclear family by setting a brood of lower caste con artists against an upper class family unit. Jealous. <laughs> Fasten your seatbelts, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Unfunny extremist. Have you got anything to say about that? Um, no, because it's wrong. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. He's very cle- He very clearly knows what he's doing because he wasn't even trying to be funny with this film. This film wasn't meant to be funny. I mean, obviously, like, you know, there were subtle bits of humour in there. But, you know, it's not a comedy, but we still got a laugh. Yeah, because they're very they're real situations. It's the black and, comedy. Know, yeah, you know, it's like in Bruges. You know, it's a dark. I do think a it's a bit theme, ridiculous. It's but def- it, it has its elements of just humor. The humor works because it's, it, it feels realistic. It feels yeah. like I don't know. I think a lot of the situations. It doesn't really feel funny. They're not making jokes. It's just thing. Funny things happen, or like, funny things they do, or yeah, say. It's not I, like these guys. These guys are the best con artists I've ever seen in a film ever. And it makes oh, me, yeah. And it makes me wonder why they were poor in the first place, because they were all very clearly very skilled people. So it just. I mean, but if you get past that bully, you know that feeling of you know disbelief well that's the capitalism there really and it doesn't yeah. capitalism proves it doesn't matter it's if you, because it's because you know, it's more of a conceptual you, you, film is, anyway but then it's like there's a there's a you only really need to ground it there's in a misconception so as well then of poor people being stupid yeah exactly so it does make sense that it could be con artists because it doesn't necessarily mean I, that you, I, I don't know though, you know because there's some crazy stuff like like her believing you've seen crackheads doing wheelies with no hands <laughs> <laughs> like they, they they've got skills mind you know no, but what I'm saying is, I don't if, think, is I if, don't they think... Are, if they are as skilled as they are, they shouldn't be in the position where they are poor as shit. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe they didn't really think because of... Because they, they have very, yes, they have very specific they do, skills. Everything they did is very, like, is very general illegal. Skill, general, general skills and being able to, you know, work hard. Like They were that, arrested yeah, enough, and the, like, mom and the, the mom and the son uh, got away with probation and obviously, you know, the father hid in the fucking basement, didn't yeah. he? Right? They will, he would have gone arrested. He would have been. He would have been probably sent to prison for life for murdering Mr. Park. Uh, you know, they, there was a dozen crimes. You know, theft. Oh yeah, of course. Trespassing. You know. Yeah. And, you know and I mean, and they still only got open probation. So, my my theory is that the fact that they didn't try this before 
it's because they knew it was illegal, but then they were on that last leg and they were like, fuck this, we got no food whatsoever, we can't keep doing this pizza box, you know, mm. bullshit, as they did in the first 10 minutes. But I'm, what I mean is it's is there's a lot of like stuff like... They took the leap, they went for he's it, clearly, it didn't he's, work out on their feet he's clearly, the end, he's clearly but. smart enough to study some something at a university because he's he's quite smart. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, the the whole thing of capitalism. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, and austerity. Yeah, I, guess, I you know. get you. Yeah, actually, yeah. So to be fair. it doesn't it doesn't prove they that would never get the opportunity. Class because doesn't they don't, prove yeah, like you know you. intelligence. You know, there's a certain uh, amount of people you know who are in charge of this country who have a very low IQ. I mm. think they're a very high IQ. No, but, you know? but, what I'm, but what I'm saying is a lot of people in those positions will have to be of a certain standard of, you know, like, the, of knowledge. It's kind of how I was actually saying that. It's kind of um, I think the reminiscent only, of V Vendetta. The only thing that I can think of possibly is, in the that same he, is that he wouldn't be able to afford to go to university or go yeah. to school. And that feeds well, into... Because his friend, that, his friend that feeds, But that feeds into the whole, you know, privatization and capitalism and stuff like that. Yeah. And that just feeds into the overall thing. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, Maybe yeah, that's yeah. the reason he can't... That none of them can get anywhere. Because so that they use, they, they use, they use their skills. They, they've, you know... Yeah, but like, you know, it requires money for them to you know, put their she, skills she, she to teaches, use. She teaches him, teaches us an art because she's like an artist herself. Yeah. So, you know... But this was their opportunity to make yeah. some money out of their skills, and they've and they've taken it because they would have never got that opportunity. There's no, otherwise. Yeah, there's no way they could get jobs yeah. because you know, it, it's yeah. I think that's the it's that's, very clever, that's the yeah. that's the only way I can really like because justify. It's funny because it. it's I still like, think it's a bit far fetched, but yeah, just I love how he doesn't, because, I love because how they're doesn't, like spies. They, I love how he doesn't, doesn't like point out for a while on like how there's definitely a kind of stereotype of poor people being stupid. He doesn't play on that at all, and I, I and I'm glad he doesn't. But I wouldn't even I wouldn't even class it as stupid. I would just class it as the, the things they do in this film are all uneducated. Very... Then that's a, that's a, that's no, a, but is that a better no, term? not even not even un- un- uneducated because these people are smarter than you know than, than yeah, but everyone I'm saying, else. Like you know, a lot... not even by a little bit, by a distance. These guys are like the amount of manipulation they do in this film. Oh yeah. To the point, to the point where it's like you know, super, super accurate. Where he's, you know, he's predicting what the guy's gonna say to him. Yeah. That's not no, That's not like a normal level of. That's that's like hyper. That's like superhero level kind of intellect. Yeah, is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, superhero. And they sh- and, and when I, I'm and I'm not Lex saying Luther. I'm not saying I'm not saying they're poor. They should be stupid. I'm saying nobody is that smart. No group of individuals is that in, you know collectively smart or you know like hyper hyper intelligent to the point where they would be superheroes in any other film are are they just averagely smart and everyone else is just thick as fuck stupid as shit well i don't know because is this like because a... there's the point where he's re- he's rehearsing the lines to him about what what the the father's gonna say to mr park yeah. and he's predicting word for word what mr park's gonna say in the conversation before it's even happened and i'm just like you wouldn't be able to do that you wouldn't be you just you wouldn't not even like you know trade professionals. I don't predict think it, I don't think it was kind of done in that in that sense. I, I mean, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant film, and it's a brilliant scene when it happens. Is it the one where he's like driving, uh, driving him? He's driving. He's driving Mr. He just, Park he picked, somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and he um he starts having the conversation. He starts, and he starts dropping, driver, dropping he? in the hints of um of of being able to hire someone else. I can't remember who it was. The wife. The wife, Hira and the wife, yeah. Because it, it goes it goes in, the son starts off teaching yeah, and English, then it's sister, and then it's her sister then teaching it's art, the and, then dad, and then dad driving, and then she's like, takes over yeah, the, takes the, the, the nanny, yeah. Uh, the nanny, yeah. Oh my God. It's great. I, lo- I, I love that. It's great. Of- <laughs> it's brilliant. Uh, but I think you'd, I think it's, the reason you don't, you can, you can sustain, suspend your disbelief from, you know, the, the realities of situations, like what I was just saying earlier, where I find it hard to believe how smart they are, yeah. is the fact that it's a it's a conceptual film, so it only really needs to have one foot in reality. It doesn't need to have both feet yeah, in reality. Yeah. Because it's such a conceptual film, that's why it works. I just love the succession and how it all, like, how the, how the plan unfolds as well. You know? Yeah. I find it weird how he, she manages to find out um, the, uh, he, that she's allergic to peaches. It's a bit yeah. strange. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> like, do, do you not remember? How, I don't know how she finds out. Like, <laughs> how would you find? Is out? she just eating a peach in front of her and then kind of just? Yeah, she's just, like, she she starts coughing. I don't. <laughs> I remember the whole peach thing. I just don't remember. Like, I don't think there was ever an explanation for how she found out. 
that she's Maybe allergic not, yeah. to peaches. It's really strange, isn't it? She she doesn't, I know she does that thing where she like flicks the like the like I don't know, peach dust. Does, yeah, she flicks have the dust? peach dust at her. Like yeah. a peach dust. Like, there you go. Yeah, because she was scraping the dust It reminds me of that Ricky Gervais like, joke what? when he's uh, talking about the, the woman on the plane with the peanut the peanut allergy and he said mm. next time that happens he's going to rub himself down in peanuts and then just give her a hug and rub it all over her face and she's like, oh my God, you know the peanuts? She's like, oh. <laughs> oh no, I remember. She's got how, peaches. I remember how she, um, how she finds out now. Yeah. Because um, the, the girl... The rich, the girl who's in the ri- who's in the rich family tells, um, I can't remember his name, Kevin. Oh, they call him Kev- Kevin. Kevin and Jessica. Kevin, yeah. yeah, Kevin and Jessica. But like she, um, I can't remember. I, it's it's really it's really bad. But I don't know his actual name. No, I don't. I, I don't. We, to be fair, we watched this once, so this is kind yeah. of like yeah, true. A quick gist of what we thought of the film thought, and yeah. yeah you know it's just gonna be a it's gonna be quite a short episode you know as they have been mm. the last few because they've been like you know we we had to go to the cinema and watch them and yeah. usually we do and we don't really remember much about them yeah yeah so bear with us mm, bear you know, with we hope we, we hope you're enjoying what we think because <laughs> you know but anyway that's yeah. how that's how she finds out about the peach um okay the peach thing is that um the the girl the rich girl tells um kevin, kevin. Kevin. And then he tells Jessica. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. That's not too bad. They're all flawless actors as well. <laughs> hmm. Like flawless. I feel like they're just assuming. I spent the entire. No, film they're just they're just doing cuts into like him, and he's just like hoping that like what she says kind of fits, and he just kind of like. I don't know. It is quite good how they do it, but like he's just going back and forth. I mean, but, 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 kind of, there but we go. But like I said, I, it, looks, um, it looks good, and I re- I really did enjoy it. But you do have this uh, suspension. No, it's a scene so people just wouldn't. Wolf like, of Wall Street, the scene where Jordan uh, starts writing Oakmont, and he has all his mates in, and then he goes through the the script of what make what makes a good you know whatever the job, I can't remember the job is. Uh, they do you know. But this I mean, is like, it but goes this back is... and forth between like him talking and then them talking, but they're all doing the script. So it's like they're all reading out the script, but it's like different characters doing each chunk. Yeah, but that's a so script. If, if, no, but if it's, like, it's doing this going back and forth it's between them rehearsing and him doing it in real life, doesn't mean that he's going to predict what she's saying. It's just done as like no, a but, but he, stylistic. But, no, but because remember, he he reads he reads he reads it back to him. Oh no, he, I guess that because he because he, the dad the dad says oh blah 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 blah, and then the other and then the kid says oh, and then she'll say blah 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 blah. Yeah. And that's, what, that's, that's just more happening. done as like a stylistic kind of thing to be like. Oh yeah, of course, of course. You know, it's, like, it's not meant to be like, thought of it's, as it's realistically. A time, it's a time it's jump, like, essentially, yeah. isn't it? You know, it's not meant to be thought of realistically. But I, I mean, yeah, it's it's also like the peach thing where you, you know you say where he, she like you know she dusts the peach next to her face mm-hmm. like that wouldn't cause a violent you know reaction in anyone. I mean, yeah, I mean to be fair, actually, I don't. You never know, really. It was like peanut dust. And they would were that, the peanuts and it's just like that yeah. would probably be quite severe. Dep- I was going to say, would that, would that be on... severe? I'm, I don't have any allergies, so I wouldn't know. But like, but also, everything goes to plan in this film. Everything always goes to plan, and even I when say that again, because I was like, I was like, I was in the <laughs> fucking mic then. Everything goes to plan in this film for them. Yeah, it does. Nothing. Yeah. It is everything is flawless, and even when the plan fails and the family comes back early, everything they make up on the spot on the fly works. They don't get caught. The only thing that ha- the only slip up they make is is when they find out the guys is, is when the is when the um the kids the, the kids the, the slips and comes... drops the rock, and that's when the the whole set the whole set, um, um you know all the events are set in motion. Oh yeah, because he yeah. drops the rock and then the the other guy manages to you know bludgeon him with the rock and then escape. The way they get rid of the first house raid is incredibly elaborate as well, but also yeah. it's, it's 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 amazing. But it's just incredibly elaborate, and just nothing would isn't go that like, smoothly. Isn't it? What? Well, isn't it something? Um, he they tells used the, they used the peach allergy to like to sell about, to sell the, to sell the there? story that she had it's tuberculosis, tuberculosis because yeah. he was put. He was you know he was saying to her in the cart that she had tuberculosis because yeah that's quite elaborate because isn't it? yeah <laughs> because he took he took a selfie with her at the airport, managed to convince the um, the the mother. That it was a selfie at the hospital, and that, you know that she was behind him the whole time. It See, was a like, very, very well, elaborate plan that somehow manages to. I, just... I know, I know. We watched this earlier. 
and you know it's still pretty fresh in my mind but like some of these little details i don't remember at all of the last oh, i remember them <laughs> yeah. well, i don't know <laughs> i remember I, I i get I, when i usually watch a film for the first time i i'm usually i usually focus on the, the cinematography and the lighting of it i don't know yeah. like it, that's kind of my first uh port call because like that kind of sells a film for me yeah if it looks if it, if if it looks if, good if, you'll listen <laughs> yeah yeah. And then I go for dialogue, and then I then I kind of go for the story. The story's always one of the last things I kind of, like, notice, which is quite... Nah. Which is well, quite I mean, funny. it's one of the last things you notice, but it's one of the most important things, because if you don't have but a it's not story, like, it's, it's not like I watch. But it's not like I watch it three or four times, so yeah. the first I watch it this way, the second, you know. It's something that, like, you know, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a saying in, in Hollywood uh, about screenplays and even films, is if you don't get people kind of enticed within the first ten minutes... They're, they're usually go. not going to watch yeah. the rest, which is why every, which is why all good films have um, really powerful you, opening scenes. Yeah, exactly. Either some sort of visual, or something to do with like you know just a great music. Like they open into dark, the Dark Knight, possibly, yeah, great, arguably the best opening sequence to any, any film, film ever made. Yeah, and I will argue to death. You know, regardless of my you know opinions on that film. It has one of the greatest, if not the greatest, that I'm um, open into any film. Mm. They nailed that. Christopher Nolan nailed exactly what they meant by get you hooked in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. 100%. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, there's not many films that do that. I don't. I'm See, I'm trying to think of Lord of the Rings. Dark Knight Rises tried, you know, with the whole, uh, the, the whole pl- the plane thing and... Aiden Gillen. That was pretty cool. You know, that was I'm pretty cool. or whatever his name is. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I love the dad. I mean, he surprises me a little bit when he, um, <laughs> when he, uh, straight up murders a fool. When he just straight up murders a fool at the end. <laughs> like, just stabs him in the chest just because he called him smelly. Yeah, like, <laughs> he was. did call him smelly. <laughs> it was literally just because he called him smelly. He fucking stabbed him in the chest. I'm like, dude, <laughs> just shower. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you see how much rain there is? It's just standing outside with a bar of soap. <laughs> and then you'll stop calling you smelly and then you end up not murdering someone and living in a basement for like 20 years I love how you, you, you think this is so funny that your voice just didn't start yeah. getting higher that was amazing <laughs> but you see what I mean I do know what like, you mean yeah he, he stabbed him because he stabbed him because he said he smelled yeah yeah he probably did <laughs> the smelly bastard <laughs> I mean, he did what he did. He did kind of sift through shit. Yeah, he did. Uh, you know, when the house got flooded, but it was so, also I mean, still raining outside. Yeah, but you know, the, the smell of shit is not really gonna go after like you know. 30, if you got a bar minutes, of soap, today. I mean, you know, that bar of soap's gonna turn to shit then, isn't it? You know, <laughs> you need like you need like a you know like a press, you just a got, press you and just wash, like an, like one of those ones that cleans buildings. Nah, you just got to stand in the rain. Blast for it, yeah. You just got it's monsoon season, dude. This it's rain, monsoon, this yeah. rain, this rain is like you know shower. <laughs> the wind will just flick it away like a fly. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the combination of the wind and the um, and the rain, it's like a pressure, <laughs> like you know, pressure washer. <laughs> You know the ones like washing buildings, like you, you walk know. outside, it's like you're stepping into a washing machine. Like, <laughs> fucking hell, it's like chucking a bucket of water through a fucking uh, airplane, uh, yeah. airplane wing, and just. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't getting hit in the face by that. I mean, the fucking the speed. I mean, the only problem he'd have is finding somewhere to stand that doesn't mean that he gets like fucking like you know splattered with shit. Yeah, he'd have to find somewhere to stand. Maybe one the top of one of the buildings or something. Yeah, yeah. That's you could shower at the top of the. I one mean, he was just kind, he was just kind of like doggy paddling at one point, just through this through the through yeah, the house. Yeah, yeah. Me. Apart from when uh, the bit where the uh, the daughter she's sitting on the toilet and the toilet's just like spurting yeah, shit, spurting shit out, and she's and having she's a fag, and, it's like, and she's having a fag, and she pulls the fag, and she's got shit, in her, she's got shit <laughs> in her hand, and she has a little bit of shit on the cigarette. It's disgusting. It's grim. There's no need for that. <laughs> No one needs a cigarette that badly, regardless yeah. of the situation. Like it's not, it's not, not worth, even, it's not worth that shit. Not even, no, not even Joaquin Phoenix and Joker not needs, even needs a fag that much. Well, he's he's got unlimited supply though, hasn't he? So true. You know, he's always <laughs> had a cigarette in that film. Yeah. Do you know what I? Th- do you know what I think is the turning point in this film? What is when he um is when he disrespected the Rock. Like, oh, Dwayne Johnson. 
No. <laughs> That's why it's the best it's song. Where, um... Dwayne Johnson shows up like, <laughs> um, what's going on? What's going on, guys? What's happening? Where's Kevin Hart? We've got a film to do. <laughs> the sequel to Ride Along. Ride Along 3. <laughs> Ride Along 3. <coughs> nah, but... um. Is when he the, the the bit where it all goes south is where he um he disrespects the rock because yeah. they get given the rock at the beginning in the film and then it brought prosperity to them and then he disrespected the rock by trying to use it um, as a weapon to, as a weapon to to throw at the pissing guy yeah so he disrespected the rock and at that point their the rock life, had their, enough their life, their, yeah the rock had had enough and their life went downhill because yeah. they got they got found out from that point onwards everything starts falling apart it's weird it's weird when you like. In fact, I think actually, we, nothing uh, really does fall apart in this film. Everything goes as it's meant to go, right up until the last second. And yeah, one and, thing and goes until, wrong, and until, then until, everything until, goes until wrong. Until the bloody murders, and then uh, the sides are... Yeah, because yeah. usually, usually, like, in films like this, you'd start seeing the cracks. You know what I mean? Well, I, you start seeing the cracks as soon as the uh, the nanny shows up again. Oh, well, I mean, I, I wouldn't, even, she, I wouldn't she reveals, even say... She reveals her husband, and then that's no, kind I, of... No, but I wouldn't even say that's revealing the cracks. I feel like, like what I mean is, like, there'd be subtle little things where, you know, what the mother would, like, suspect something, or the father would suspect something. But nothing like that ever happens, and then everything happens all at once. They discover the, the people, the the guy downstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, the, the, the old nanny comes back. They discover the guy downstairs, and... Um, and they have all these fights and everything, and all these stabbings happen, all within the space of like twenty four hours. And it's imp- oh yeah, it does yeah. And yeah. it's and it's implied well, it's the birthday party, isn't yeah. it? That's what, yeah, that's what I mean. But the birthday party party, I'm pretty sure, happened like the day after, didn't it? Because he was still in the tent from the night before. So it literally, it wasn't even in the space of twenty four hours. It was in the space of like a night and a morning. Yeah, at that point, it all happened. But like, and it's implied that they're doing all this stuff for like months beforehand. Or like, it was it was it must be like at least weeks. You know what I mean? And then everything goes goes to shit within the space of like you know eight or nine hours. Like, it's one thing I just realized. Um, where did they get the clo- their clothes from? Where like you know the suits clothes? and stuff. It's oh, never yeah. really implied That's that they would point. own a suit. That's a good point. Unless they're really cheap. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Or maybe he might be some street dealer that they get from who's um who get who's who does them tailoring for cheap. You never really see what they do with any of the money they make, though. Could you think with their f- combined salaries? Although, then again, it may it might just be implied that they were there for less than a month, because he does say at the beginning that he um that he would be paying him the same day every month, so it was monthly pay. Yeah. Maybe they weren't there for for long enough to get their first pay. That's why they may, maybe their lives don't change throughout the the course of the film. Yeah, it could have been like because the, they uh, they probably just it never really got paid. It doesn't really say how long it is. It, it it feels almost like a few weeks, not so yeah. much like a month. Yeah, maybe like two. But three But maybe weeks. maybe they just weren't there for long enough to get their first first pay. But then again, you know, that's a lot of stuff to to orchestrate in a couple of weeks, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think Imagine it really focuses on like them. Like... I know like the whole thing is about them making money, but I think they get so caught up in that way of living that the money doesn't really seem to be an issue because they don't have a need for it because there's always food, they got a place to be, yeah. you know, they got a job. So they spend the majority of their time at this house and then eventually they, they leech on as the parasites take yeah. over the house. And like I said, this is, it almost feels like if they got their way and and the whole nanny and her, and her husband being locked downstairs became a thing, I feel like they would have edged that family out and probably would have murdered them. Ever feel like they would have gotten that far? Oh, I don't know if they've to take them. completely take over their lives. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, it is a good point because literally, as or soon like, as you know, as manipulate leave... them enough where they end up living with them. Yeah, to a ends degree, up you, their you own know, they all get their own bedroom. Like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's but, why, that's why I feel like they, 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 it was edging, and you, I would love to see what would have happened if. You know, is there is there another alternative route which would have kind of had to happen if mm. if the nanny didn't come back and reveal the husband? And I want yeah. to know what would have happened if they completely got their way, because mm. you don't really have. Do they really explain what their end game is? Not really. It's just to make up, make as much money. They want as money, and yeah. then as as it progresses, they obviously you know they have a change of heart, and it, it feels like they have a change of heart, and it becomes more about the the way of living. Yeah. Hence, I kind guess, of yeah. like that, like, you know. Less about the, the money and more about, like, the material stuff and, like, you know. Well, it's kind of like, it, it kind of preys on that social inequality then, doesn't mm. it? 
with you know do you know what um the the thing that the cons of the classes, I feel like they like they, they they they've lived so long as like kind of this higher class that as long as they kind of like live in this like haven, which is the house, they'll they they they'll kind of be like a higher class rather than they mm. won't be like you know the you know bottom of the pile, you know poor as fuck living in a in semi basement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel you. like I feel like that's kind of where it takes it. And it it takes it into and then it takes it into a completely completely different film really than it, it the, mm. the, the, the curveball at the end which we've mentioned i mean it got me you know yeah i did not see that coming what well, it, it's him coming out and murdering people and like yeah and then um i thought they i thought they won i thought Mr. they Park. genuinely won and i thought maybe they would have got they, they would have found out they were lying Found people in the basement, they would have got arrested. I didn't yeah. think that that but kind of like no, I want to say it's a bloodbath because only like one person, two people died. Um, only. I'd still call it a but yeah. Can, um, all things considered, in bloodbath like, I'd say is more than five deaths. I mean, that's my that's, that's my that's my uh. No, but you'd consider it a bloodbath for a you know a, a six year old's birthday party, wouldn't you? In the context of what it was, no, it's just a couple of two murders. De- two just, deaths. Just a, just a couple of murders, bro. I mean, if it was at like you know of of of. Not quite a bloodbath. Not quite a bludgeon. I like a death metal um, concert. Then yeah, maybe you'd expect a few more deaths than a six-year-old's birthday. <laughs> I won't expect any deaths at a death metal concert, <laughs> unless the theme is death <laughs> the theme by the metal, death. as in like you know anything made out of metal, you have to die from. Stabbing, yeah, yeah. I think the only thing that actually something that does confuse me is that they're t- they're the point where they are kind of living in the house yeah. while the um, while the families the other families away. Oh, is that when they go on the camping trip? Yeah, when they go on the tra- the camping trip and they start living in the house. I feel like what they're they're too smart to make the decisions that they do because they like, you know, they break stuff, you know, they br- Yeah, yeah. You know, he breaks glass, dad breaks glass everywhere, they leave food everywhere and it's all like really messy and I feel like they're too smart to do something like that because they've been so meticulous up to that point. I think it's because at that time I mean, I know they, they're drunk, but you know, no, I mean, on. <laughs> they, they were going to go for the weekend, would they? And then they, yeah. they, they, just, they decided to come back because of the oh, weather. Even still, you wouldn't risk making a mess. Though, no, but like you? they didn't, they didn't think it was going to be raining, so they thought they had the entire weekend. They thought, oh, we'll clean this up tomorrow. Oh no, of course, but but what I'm saying is, is at this point, you wouldn't risk making a mess, regardless, just in case they did come back early. Especially at this point, because you'd realise, oh my god, it's re- look how much is pissing down outside right now. We probably should be careful because they might come back. People who people, I'd be fair, people, I'd, be, I'd be thinking that. Yeah, I don't think. But, these that's, but that's what. I, but that's what I mean is like the, these guys have shown how smart they are, how incredibly intelligent they are throughout the entire film, and then they miss something as simple as that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they 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 predict everything that's going to happen, and everything you know is meticulously planned and thought out. They, you know, they prepare for every eventuality. Yeah. And then it suddenly starts pissing down with rain outside, like, you know, lightning and thunder. And they probably, and they don't think to themselves, maybe they're not going to go camping this weekend. Yeah. Maybe no, well, they, they, maybe they, they will... might come back. This weather's a bit, a bit of a, might be a bit of an issue. We might need to be careful and, you know, be, be a bit. Just in case. Yeah. yeah just in back. case. And still have a drink and have a good still time. Drink, yeah. But, you know, keep an eye on the. Good time, you, you say? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. But like you know, keep an eye on the driveway because that's how I. No, react. yeah, I I would be the same. And I'd I'm, be, I'd and I'm be definitely anxious. not as intelligent as these people. <laughs> like, that's not for me to decide. Do you know what struck me as well during the film was the the the, the how dramatic the transformation is between um the when the first um nanny person leaves and when she comes back, how different she is when she's working for the family and when she's not working for the family. <coughs> In fact, actually, yeah. the the um, when the mum becomes the nanny, she her appearance changes quite drastically as well. They both look incredibly different when they're in the job and when they're not in the job. Yeah, you get true. what I mean. Like she looks like a nutcase. Yeah, when it's raining and she's got glasses. Oh, right? of course, yeah. But, but um, what I'm saying is, she looks completely different. She's almost like completely unrecognizable from the character yeah. she was before when she. One was of the funniest things. One of the funniest things with her is when she's trying to open the door. And she's like pressed up against yeah, the bookshelf. Yeah, she's shelf. pressed up against the bookshelf. And, the, and, and the, I thought, and I, she, I shit myself at that point because it, 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 I wasn't expected to be there. I, was, I thought she was going to do some weird fucking like turn. I was like, oh, this is going to be like a from dust to dawn now where like 
it's going to be a weird vampire film. Yeah, it's going to be a really, like really weird Paris twist. Film. Where yeah, where it's like... I was expecting that, that. I think that's why I did not expect the endings. I was expecting a horror film. Yeah. Like, it was exactly at that point. It was like, right. It was leaning in there because like, yeah, this is going to be a horror film now. Like, it, it felt like it could have gone in the direction of Fundus Till Dawn where it's a classic, you know, first half is like a big build up to, you know, to, to kind of what it is. And then, yeah. And then it just kind of goes crazy for the last yeah. half. It just doesn't do that. It does it in a different way. And, and I'm glad for it because, you know, I don't think I could have dealt with it being mm. a fucking alien film about, you know, uh, invasion of the body snatchers or something. Yeah. You know, I have one question for you, and I think we should close with it. Okay. The ending. Mm-hmm. So when he's reading, is it like a diary, or was it like a letter to his dad? I mean, I think saying it's, that when he gets the money, he's gonna buy the yeah, house, and then, a, they, and then it, they show they show him. That's the when they were bit where they show him hugging him, and they don't. Yeah, quite, they show the possibility. The wife doesn't quite get there. Um, they show the possibility. The possibility, of what could happen, yeah. yeah, and they leave it up. <laughs> it's an ambiguous ending because you know, who knows? Who knows? Does the guy ever get to leave and be with his the remainder of his family again, or does he not? Do you think that there is a possibility that See, for me, it's... he could have made enough. The son could have made enough money to eventually buy the house, then f- not free his dad because his dad is technically wanted for murder. See, it's interesting as well, though, isn't it? Because I believe that. At the end of the film, he's pretty much in the same situation that he is at the beginning of the film. Yeah, kind of trapped. What in makes this kind yeah, of... but what what makes the end of the film any different that he'd have any hope of making that much money? Yeah, what makes it? What makes him? But I mean, it's maybe because he has an actual like you know, it's something to work towards now to free his dad, or you know, to you know, quote unquote, free his dad because he would really only be able to stay in the, in the <laughs> literally, house. Yeah. Well, all, would, all, the, all that would happen would be he'd be restricted from the basement to restricted to the house. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, what's better than nothing? At least he gets that really nice garden space. Gets, yeah, at least he gets to see that the garden was incredibly outside, beautiful. Yeah, at least he gets and, to see uh, the sunlight. S- saying that before we before we finish this because I uh, we didn't really mention it. I'm going to be brief. How good looking is this film? Very good looking. Very. The good lighting looking. is probably the most important aspect for me. It's the way he uses the, the like these halogen light bulbs and just yeah, because all the lights at the um at the top in the the upstairs of the house are all very warm colors, yeah. whereas these ones are very cold and dark. Like you know like how um in the the where where the in the Joker when he's um or when he gets in the fridge. No, when he's also when he gets in the fridge as well. Because that's a. Because it contrasts with the light outside, doesn't it? But no, yeah. I, when he's um, when he's dancing in the the toilets after he's killed the people, oh yeah, and there's like the contrast between yeah. the warm light coming from the outside and yeah. the um, and the the halogen light bulbs on the inside that are like really like green, almost green tinge. Yeah, because like, the know. walls kind of do that in this film, doesn't it? Like, mm. but the, I saw like when it was just like I don't know the light in led the film for me. It was kind of like what I was drawn to mostly. Because mm. it made it, it made it seem more bleak in the um. It really made in the underground. It, it, it like, really made the house feel cold, empty, just kind of unlivable for me. I couldn't live in that house. Oh no, I think the house was perfect. It was 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 nicely, you know, made it made it look quite warm and welcoming. I think it's no. I mean, it it was more it was the, more of the architectural design of it. It was it's too it's too modern. It's too like. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to live in that house. It's too... It's too big. I don't know. <laughs> for me, it was There's too no big, need but... for that that much space in one room. Do you know I mean, how... I do, I do, do like Do you know how, space, like, but... when you go you go over to someone's house and then they've got, like... They've got a large living room and they've got a sofa against the wall and against one wall and then the TV is, like, 500 metres in the corner of the other wall... And you're just sitting there wondering, how do you watch this? How do you watch it? That is exactly what do I you thought. Watch the binoculars? <laughs> I was watching this entire film thinking, if they had any furniture but this giant fucking coffee table and sofa, where would they put the TV? Yeah. That's all I think about. And it's just unlivable. And I just need to say that. But I need to mention, you know, any of the shots through, you know, through the glass windows showing outside of the tent. I don't know. It's just. It I thought stunning. that was pretty cool. But yeah, so the ending, yeah. Did we? Did, do you think that if you know, do 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 you think he could have made the money? I I think he probably could have. Are we talking realistic terms or realistically? In terms of the movie? Yeah, realistically. Realistically, I don't think he would have, because the system would never have changed. 
And I think that's the whole point of the of this film is that the system never changes, and that's the problem that we have, is that poor people are poor people and rich people are rich people, and you, there's very very rarely that you get transitions between each, or at least from poor people to rich people. Yeah, which is a problem, and I think that's in the context of the film. I think it would have been a pretty bleak, um, you know, outlook. Really? Yeah. I don't think he would have been able to do no, it. No, I'm joking. I agree. I don't. I, <laughs> there's no fucking way he There's made no enough way. money for that. I just wanted yeah. to see if you had an opposing argument. Oh, so. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I, I agree with you, you know, fully on that. You know, the premise that the film sets up, you just wouldn't imagine him being able to do You wouldn't imagine things being any different. Unless he found a black opal <laughs> and made an insane bet on the Sartix game. <laughs> that's winning one point two million dollars. Who and knows? Is, um, and that's you know. that's how those films are connected. That's how those films are <laughs> they connect to an uncut gem. They're both uncut gems. <laughs> yeah, that's so. Th- that's it for another episode of the Conversation Is podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can uh, go follow us on Facebook at Conversation Is podcast on Twitter at TCI underscore podcast and on instagram at conversation is podcast we're also on the hill Rap productions channel on youtube go subscribe like comment share to all your friends share the podcast just let everyone know we want to leech onto everyone uh, like a parasite <laughs> and with that i've been charlie pitts and, and i've been with josh yeah. e-boy <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. See you later. Goodbye.